Although cotton and textiles were early major exports of Cleveland County during the late 19th and early 20th centuries, Cleveland County was also a premier exporter of political leadership. From the late 1800s to the middle of the 1900s, Cleveland County was the birthplace of what became known as the Shelby Dynasty. This group of politicians quickly dominated government in the state of North Carolina and included a United States congressman in Edwin Yates Webb, a senator in Clyde Huey, a state superior court judge in James Webb, and two North Carolina governors in Oliver Max Gardner and Clyde Huey. These men, along with others, formed one of the most powerful political dynasties in North Carolina history and put Cleveland County on the map as a landmark of United States politics. When trying to pin down exactly how long the Shelby dynasty lasted, historians give several interpretations. Some argue it lasted for 20 years and revolved mainly around Huey and Oliver Max Gardner. However, others argue that if you count the webs, then the dynasty would have a much earlier start. What you are left with is a political lineage which spanned more than 50 years, beginning with the Webb's rise to prominence in the late 1800s and ending with Huey's death in the 1950s. Although the dynasty was around for many years, it is completely valid that its peak was during the periods in which both Huey and Gardner served as governor of North Carolina. These three pens found in the Cleveland County Historical Collection are symbols of the influence of the Shelby Dynasty on a national level, and all were at the center of some of the most important times in American history. Together, they symbolize a tradition that has maintained itself since the creation of the United States of America, a tradition which is still held to this day by the highest ranking office in the country, the Presidency. Since the founding of the United States of America, signing ceremonies have been an institution within the political landscape of this ever-changing, ever-growing nation. These formal gatherings of lawmakers, lobbyists, and assorted policymakers were put into place in order to help show the significance of certain bills which are signed by the president. Some of these include the largest landmarks in American history. The Emancipation Proclamation, the New Deal, and the Civil Rights Act are all examples of extremely important legislation which was signed into action through a form of ceremony. Over the years, these ceremonies have become even more present in the public's attention, as new technologies such as radio and television were able to give Americans more access to these important events. Many were able to witness the Civil Rights Act being signed with their own eyes, whereas those who knew about the Emancipation Proclamation found out through newspaper accounts or friends. Although the bills being signed at these ceremonies are a forever changing torrent of legislation, what they are signed with is something that is deeply rooted in tradition and has its own unique history. Most scholars believe that dating back to President Truman, the presidential pin has gained an ever-increasing importance in the signing of legislation. It was Truman who first popularized the signing of bills with multiple pins in order to pass them out to key legislators and bill supporters as souvenirs of their accomplishments. Many presidents since have taken the tradition to heart, with each president using their particularly favorite pen to sign bills and pass them out as gifts to legislators and esteemed guests. At the beginning of Donald Trump's presidency, he handed out hundreds of AT Cross pens to policymakers while signing executive orders. AT Cross has made pens for at least seven different administrations, including Gerald Ford, Barack Obama, and Donald Trump. Each pen costs over $100 and brandishes the president's signature on the side. Presidents have had to master signing pieces of their name with each pen while still making their signature look as natural and fluid as possible. What is important is that each person who receives one of these pens is also entrusted with a piece of American history all their own. One of the most prolific multi-pen signers was none other than Lyndon Baines Johnson. Johnson was a man on a mission when he took over the presidency in 1964. He quickly rolled out his plan for the Great Society, which aimed to reduce poverty and crime while also helping the environment. These policies were created with the idea of building a more perfect United States. Between 1965 and 1967, the 89th Congress approved 84 of the 86 bills that Johnson proposed, making it one of the most effective legislatures in American history. Along the way, Johnson was passing out pens left and right, but the most important signing ceremony of his administration was the passage of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. For this signing ceremony, Johnson used 75 pens to sign the legislation, which was the most of any president up to that point. These pens went to people who were integral to the bill's passage, including Martin Luther King Jr. 
This pen from the Cleveland County Historical Collection was used in signing legislation between the years of 1965 and 1967 and was gifted to Faye Webb Gardner by President Johnson. Faye Webb Gardner was the wife of Oliver Max Gardner and along with her husband carved a name for herself in federal and state politics. She was consistently cited as someone who was able to get things done and was known as a fixture of the Democratic Party in North Carolina late into her life. Due to the sheer number of bills signed and pens given out by LBJ, it is nearly impossible to find out exactly which bill this pen would have signed. However, it is important to note that Miss Fay, as she was known to most, was particularly liked by Lady Bird Johnson, even being noted in the First Lady's diary entries. Perhaps most flattered of all I was to see Mrs. O. Max Gardner, that grand dame who had come up from North Carolina especially for this. Although the story behind the Johnson pen ends in mystery, the other historic pens in the Cleveland County Historical Collection have much more clear backgrounds. In 1904, the power of the Shelby dynasty had yet to be fully realized. However, the Webb brothers were early political pioneers as they began their careers in government in the 1880s. James Webb took his first appointment as district solicitor in 1882 and would become a superior court judge in 1894. Edwin took his first congressional seat in 1902. He would hold this seat for eight consecutive terms until he was appointed to be a federal judge by President Woodrow Wilson in 1919. It was during his time in Congress that Webb decided to give back to his local community. He began to lobby for funds to build a new monument on the site of the Battle of Kings Mountain, which is known as one of the most decisive wins for the Patriots during the American Revolution. The battle happened a mere nine miles from Kings Mountain, North Carolina, in what is today rural Cherokee County, South Carolina. Webb, having surely grown up hearing stories of the gallant fighting forces of Colonel William Campbell, sought to partner with the Daughters of the American Revolution and other groups to erect a new monument. This came after the disappointing construction of a monument for the centennial anniversary of the battle in 1880, which ran out of funding before a bronze revolutionary soldier could be placed on top. This led to an unfinished, unadorned, and unappreciated structure, which is still in existence today. In 1906, the parties involved finally got their wish. After two years of lobbying, the federal government appropriated the generous sum of $30,000 for the project, a number which would equal almost a million dollars in today's money. There were many reasons for the success of this project, one of which was probably the American president himself. Teddy Roosevelt had a deep respect for the Battle of Kings Mountain at one point writing that this brilliant victory marked the turning point of the American Revolution. In 1909, the 83 and a half foot structure made of Mount Airy granite was completed with a dedication ceremony which saw thousands in attendance. Both Governor Kitchen of North Carolina and Governor Ainsley of South Carolina made speeches to the delight of the crowd. Unfortunately, Webb was unable to attend himself as he was sick and was forbidden from attending by his family. This pin, which was given to Edwin Yates Webb in 1906, was used by United States President Theodore Roosevelt to sign the Appropriations Bill for the building of the Battle of Kings Mountain Monument. Towards the end of his career in Congress, Webb would sponsor another piece of legislation which aimed to help American exports towards the end of World War I. This piece of legislation became known as the Webb Pomerain Act of 1918. President Woodrow Wilson used this pen in order to sign that legislation. Three separate pens with three separate stories reside deep within the archives of the Cleveland County Historical Collection. These pens illustrate the amazing political history of the county which saw the birth of the Shelby Dynasty, which would dominate politics in the first half of the 20th century. Thank you for joining the Earl Scruggs Center for this episode of Collection Curiosities.